Hey guys, this video is going to be part one of a collaboration with Inside Junkie, so make sure to check out part two after this video. Anyways, let's get on to some tips on how to influence people. Knowing how to influence people is a skill that you need to have if you want to be successful in this world. Not necessarily manipulation, but influence. Whether it's getting the sale or talking to a cute girl, you need to know how to persuade people. Most of the decisions you make in the supermarket about buying a product are influenced by marketers and advertisers who watch you throughout the day. Learning these skills of persuasion and influence will not only help you convince other people to your cause, but will also help you avoid being manipulated from malicious con artists. The book Influence by Robert Cialdini is a fundamental book if you want to learn the science of persuasion, and in the book he gives us six principles to influence people. Number one, reciprocity. Have you ever felt compelled to give someone a gift just because they had given you a gift earlier? Or maybe you felt obligated to invite someone to a party, but even though you didn't really like them just because they invited you to theirs. We human beings have an innate tendency to return the favor. This is how we evolved. In prehistoric times, you wouldn't want to be as seen as a person who added no value to the group, because then you would risk losing your place in the tribe. And so, in order to survive, we would exchange things with people in our tribe. In evolutionary term and in game theory, this is called reciprocity altruism. The need to return the favor is regularly exploited by marketers. This is why car dealerships might give you a free keychain, or religious recruiters might give you a flower. And it's also why I give you a bunch of free confidence hacks for your email in the description. So if you want to influence someone, start off by giving them something of value, and ask nothing in return. Maybe give them a really thoughtful gift, or even something small like a candy bar or a flower. Once they've accepted your gift, they're more likely to do you a favor in return. Tip number two is commitment and consistency. If people commit, whether it's orally or in writing, to an idea or a goal, they are more likely to honor that commitment because of establishing that idea or goal as being congruent with their own self-image. Even if the original incentives or motivations is removed after they've already agreed, they will continue to honor the agreement, usually. This is because we humans are very protective of our own identity. If we tell someone we're going to do something, we don't want to risk looking like someone who doesn't follow through. And, of course, this can be used in an amazing way to persuade people. You can create something that's called a yes ladder. Most of the time, if you ask someone for a larger request up front, they're going to decline. But you can get them to comply to some crazy things if you build it up by using smaller requests. Make a small request, get them to say yes, and then make a slightly larger request. In fact, here's a fun example of how you can get a stranger to give you their wallet. If you walk up to them directly and ask them for their wallet, they're either going to say no at best or punch you in the face at worst. But you could use the yes ladder in the following way. Number one, walk up to them and ask them if they like magic tricks. Most of the time they'll say yes. Then ask them if they'd like to see a cool little trick. They'll probably say yes if they said yes to the first one. Then ask them if they happen to have a dollar on them. They usually say yes and pull out a dollar. Sometimes they don't have a dollar. And then the last one say, actually, can I just hold your wallet for a second? Now they're more likely to say yes to this request. Of course, this isn't going to work all the time, and I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you're an actual magician, but this example illustrates how a big request like asking for someone's wallet can seem very natural if you build up to it using the yes ladder. Tip number three is social proof. People will do things that they see other people are doing. Again, this goes back to our tribe mentality. We don't want to act against the tribe's wishes. So if the tribe doesn't accept someone, then we don't want to accept them as well. When we see a lot of people like something or someone, then we're more likely to like that thing or person as well. This is why marketers say things Things like 9 out of 10 dentists recommend this toothpaste. You can also use this to build attraction with a potential romantic partner. If you take them somewhere on a date where everyone knows you and they're really friendly with you, then the girl that you're with is more likely to think that you're a likable person and hence she's likely to find you more attractive. Tip number four is authority. People will tend to obey authority figures, even if they're asked to perform objectionable acts. We can see this in the Milgram experiment. Most of the time, when we don't know what to do, we just defer our decision making to someone who looks like an authority. Now this is usually a good thing because we want advice from people who know what they're talking about, also known as experts. But the problem is that it's far too easy to fake being an authority. If a man comes up to you dressed as a police officer and asks you a series of questions with a stern look, you're actually likely to believe he's a real police officer just because of the way he's dressed and the way he's talking. Politicians use this to their advantage, to influence people to vote for them. They appear like authorities, like they know what they're talking about, and then they give people simple solutions that they can wrap their heads around, even if that problem is more complex. This gets people to think that they actually do know what they're talking about, and vote them into office so that they don't have to think about the harder problems themselves. In order to protect yourself from this authority bias, whenever an authority figure tells you something, also make sure to think about the situation in an objective manner. What would you do if this came from a person who did not have any authority? What about someone that you actually didn't like? This kind of thinking ties us into tip number five, the liking bias. Now this should come as no surprise to anyone. We listen to people that we like. There are many factors as to why we like someone. Maybe we find them attractive or maybe they come from the same city as us. Anyways, once we decide that we like someone, we're going to be more influenced 
by what they say. This is why attractive people can often have an advantage in convincing people, because most people tend to like them right off the bat. However, this does not mean if you're not attractive, you cannot get someone to like you. One of the easiest ways to get someone to like you is to give them a compliment. Give the other person a genuine compliment about something that you noticed about them. Give them a smile and actually listen to them when they talk. Tip number six is scarcity. We are more worried about losing something that we have than we are about gaining something that we don't have. So if I come up to you and I sell you a jacket for $500, you might think it's pretty expensive and probably not buy it. But if I tell you it's the last jacket manufacturer by that company and there are only three of these left in the world, then $500 might not seem that expensive. And your thought process might even be, hey, I could buy this and sell it on eBay for $1,000. This is why marketers tell you to hurry now before the offer closes. This creates a sense of urgency in you. You feel like you're going to miss out on a great deal if you don't spend your money right at that moment. This forces a decision out of you if you are on the fence. And it's a great technique to get someone to comply to your request. This is probably the biggest reason why Black Friday and Cyber Monday is such a huge phenomenon in the US. People know that they're not going to get any better deals and it's only for a limited period of time, so they rush to buy products they don't even need. In order to protect yourself from the scarcity bias, always take a step back and keep things in perspective. Do you really need to buy that great leather jacket that's only on sale for one day? Would you have bought it anyway even if it wasn't on sale? Before I end this video, I want to give a huge shout out to Inside Junkie. He's actually the guy who animates most of my videos and he's created the content for this video and part 2 on his channel. Here's a message from him. So what you learn in this video are techniques on influencing people, but a lot of times you can influence people without even saying a word. Did you know that you're more likely to buy French wine if you hear French music in the background? So for more tips like this, head over to my channel Inside Junkie and watch my latest video on persuasion.